coincidence, Tommy Baldwin is actually featured on the January page of the Chelsea desk calendar when he was part of the Chelsea side that won the FA Cup in 1970 and the following season he won the European Cup Winners' Cup and uh, certainly Chelsea could do with a few leaders here tonight. Latest scores in the Football League, Charlton 0, Northampton 1, MK Dons lead Wimbledon by a goal to nil, Bristol Rovers in League 1 have fallen behind to Exeter and at Valley Parade it's Bradford City 0, Salford 1 and Sutton are leading at Mansfield by a goal to nil, that's the latest in League 2. As we're underway, Michael Carrick was at pains to point out that tonight won't define Middlesbrough and their season, but it's certainly a season-defining week for Chelsea when you think that this League Cup semi-final is followed by an FA Cup tie on Friday night against Aston Villa. So much resting on this for Chelsea as they look to overturn that 1-0 deficit. So, giving you the two teams, Chelsea are playing in their royal blue shirts and shorts and white socks from right to left as we look and they're attacking that boisterous end of the ground full of 4,000 Borough supporters who are certainly going to make their presence felt that is guaranteed as the ball is over the top and gathered in by Glover as uh, Sterling on the right hand side was trying to make that darting run forward and now Clark and it's with Barlasa and he gets a free kick you of course have been in this situation Glenn because semi-final with Crystal Palace you yes. came into that second leg protecting a 1-0 lead against Cardiff if you can remember what the, the, the mindset was back well, in the day. I actually thought it was 0-0 both legs and there wasn't a goal scored then or, but maybe my mind's playing tricks on me well according to my research you went in leading by a goal to nil you lost the second leg 1-0 and okay. then he went, he went out on penalties yeah they played Liverpool they did yeah bad night yeah uh, anyway here is uh, Chilwell so if you can't remember the score, there's no point asking about well, what the mindset I, was. I didn't play, then or did I? I was sat on the bench. <laughs> but you would have been part of the, uh, the, the, the dressing room. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it was, I, I think at the time, we were Cardiff, I think Cardiff were in the same division. Yes, I they think were. it was two championship teams. Nice. So it was a little bit different uh, to this this evening. But yeah, I mean, with, with that opportunity to, to go to Wembley and, and knowing you've got that carrot, I think it's huge for the Borough lads here. We can just see them sat in, in I would call it probably a mid-block, not too negative, but just blocking holes and not letting Chelsea play through them. And Chelsea just playing around the periphery, just trying to find those gaps. Maybe they would have won had you played, or started at least. Well, that's what I was hinting, that sort of thing. Here is Housen, gets away from the challenge, plays it forward to Hackney, just bounced away from Hackney. Ha uh, Caicedo came across and Mudrick helps tidy up. And then it'll be tidied back to the goalkeeper, Colwell, to, uh, to Petrovic for... Uh, for, uh, for Chelsea so uh, at the minute it's with Thiago Silva Middlesbrough fans creating a lot of the noise inside Stamford Bridge as Colwell hits the ball over the top Enzo Fernandez is pushed on in a supporting role on that occasion just behind uh, Broya it's almost as if they're playing 4-1-4-1 I mean Borough will be absolutely delighted by it just a long straight hopeful ball from Levi Colwell no one running onto it skips through to the goalkeeper and that is just bread and butter to, to Middlesbrough but just then Hackney got the ball, it was a really bad touch. If he'd just been away to open up, the left-back had made a really good run. And it was an opportunity to get in the back four. Sterling far side the right, loses the ball, picked up by Morgan Rogers, who runs forward. Sterling tries to get back at him. Rogers has done well on that Middlesbrough left-hand side. His diagonal ball into the penalty area is picked up by Petrovic. Remember, Middlesbrough don't have to win. They just have to avoid defeat in the 90 minutes, and they will be at Wembley on Sunday the 25th of February taking on either Fulham against Liverpool as you can see the rain swirling across the pitch here at Stamford Bridge in West London Good into point. the faces of the Chelsea players Good play by Morgan Rodgers that's exactly what his team needed to do carry that ball cut in a little bit hopeful with the ball but right idea trying to be positive and if Borough could get a goal well that would be massive for them that would ask a lot of questions of Chelsea here is Cole Palmer Picks the ball up, far side the right, midway through the uh, the Middlesbrough half, back to Thiago Silva. Now with uh, with Colwell, passes the ball along the ground. Mudrick waits, takes a touch on the inside, and then the interception from Vandenberg. Now with force, holds it, turns away from Mudrick, back towards Housen. His experience will be so crucial as he runs forward now over the halfway line. He was a doubt with a knock. He missed the game at the weekend. Force plays it to Housen. Uh, flag was raised on this here side. Stuart Downing is also with us. 
as we talked about between ourselves ahead of the game about how Middlesbrough are going to line up, Hackney is the one who's maybe just starting to drift out towards that left-hand side. Yeah, sorry, and yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's surprising really, isn't it? But maybe it's a tactic thinking if Cole Palmer's sort of advancing into attacking positions, if you just look there in, in the in the shot, there'll be a lot of space in that little pocket there for him to pick it up, and that's when you're looking to get him on the ball, and then Rodgers maybe up the side of Thiago Silva, so that might be a tactic that Michael's seen in, in Chelsea's tactics. Rodgers is uh, leading the line, Crooks is playing off him, falls out, Stewart had said in the build-up with Kelly to the uh, to the right, and Hackney on the, uh, on, the, on the left, as it's in the arms of goalkeeper Tom Glover, who throws it out under arm to Dale Fry, club's longest-serving player, his forward ball intercepted by Mudrick, bounces up in the air, headed out by Housen, that might run towards Crooks, who's never going to get there with his pace, Thiago Silva slides into the challenge, might have just picked up a knock on his left shoulder, he's nursing that at the moment, is uh, Thiago Silva, it was uh, two players who were both committed, but he's, um, he's still holding it, Glenn Murray. Yeah, he doesn't look happy, Levi Cole is going to play him the ball there, but he's he's waving, play it, missed me out, play it right to Disassi on the right-hand side, just finding himself a little bit down the Brazilian. Remember, there is no VAR as well. There was uh, not in the uh, the first leg at the Riverside. There'll be none at Craven Cottage tomorrow. In fairness and consistency from the uh, from the Football League, MK Dons two Wimbledon nil. By the way, is the latest score in in League Two. Bald headed Clark out towards that far side. Middlesbrough all in red, playing from left to right. Still nil nil in these early stages. Six minutes play. Hackney spreads play. Vandenberg. Dutch youth international forward, his low ball in, goes past two middles for players, it was behind both Fors and Crooks, Housen picks it up, Fors right hand side, crosses into the penalty area, Thiago Silva with a clearance and put out a play for a throw, and the roar you can hear is a, I was going to say a corner of Teesside, but it's more than a corner, 4,000 of them from the northeast. come on Borough is the champ behind that goal, away towards our left hand side, certainly no signs, of this red unit parking the bus as it's uh, with Barlassa. Every outfield player is indeed in the Chelsea heart. Bradford City have equalised at home to Salford. 1-1 at Valley Parade. Charlton 1, Northampton 1 is the latest score at the Valley as the ball runs behind and it will be a, a goal kick. Certainly been a, a decent start from a championship team. Well, Deno, seven minutes in, if you didn't know which team was which, you would definitely think Middlesbrough were the Premier League side. They've settled into the game better, they've used the ball better, they've got in between spaces. Chelsea are the ones playing the long ball. And so far, I'm sure Michael Carrick will be extremely happy with his, the way his players have been brave and settled into this fixture. As Stuart will know, I did this in the first leg and there is a caveat to, uh, it's a rough estimate, and my maths isn't necessarily the greatest either, but... I've worked out that the starting lineup for Chelsea is somewhere in the region of £486 million. Give or take the odd million. Ridiculous, uh, isn't it? I rounded down rather than rounding up. <laughs> Middlesbrough, a fraction of that. Fords, short diagonal ball, look towards Rodgers. Well, hope not necessarily to cash in on, uh, on Rodgers, but Aston Villa are uh, certainly trying to lure him to the uh, to the Premier League. He was a former West Bromwich Albion Academy player before he went, moved to Manchester City. And he's uh, he's been a model professional, head down and focused and committed fully to the Middlesbrough cause, which is commendable to the uh, to the young man, despite what must be a, an unsettling period for him. Eight minutes played, nil-nil. Five live BBC sounds. Here is Colwell. Diagonal Brow ball. Mudrick comes in off the left touch line. Inside to Fernandez, back to Mudrick, shot takes a deflection. You go behind for a corner kick, nil nil. Glenn. Good by Chelsea. Mudrick, first sign of life from them getting in between the pockets there. Mudrick just drifting towards the 18 yard box and getting his shot where I think he was looking at that far corner. A good block by Middlesbrough. Chilwell, good to see him back in the starting lineup. Came off the, uh, the bench against Fulham last time out after missing 18 games with a, a hamstring injury. So uh, Ben Chilwell, captain tonight for Chelsea, places the ball down on this near left-hand side. In front of the travelling support, it'll be left-footed, it should be an outswinging corner. Indeed it is, and it's headed out, and as far as Caicedo, Mudrick then plays it towards Sterling. Middlesbrough don't push out straight away, Sterling time to measure the cross, strikes his own player, ends up Fernandez, heads it away, comes back to Fernandez, plays it back in, Fries 
header runs out and then House and clears. Crooks was giving chase, but it was always going out of play for uh, for a throw. Goal at Bolton now, Mike Marnay. And Bolton lead by a goal to nil. Victor Adeboyejo rolls it into the bottom right-hand corner after nicking the ball off a defender and through one-on-one. That comes after Cheltenham had had the two best chances of the game so far, but the home side's the favourites, lead by a goal to nil. Dundee have just taken the lead at Tyne Castle in the Scottish Premiership. Hearts nil, Dundee won. MK Dons now lead Wimbledon 3-0 and Charlton lead... Sorry, Charlton have fallen behind to home to Northampton. Charlton won, Northampton 2. You're up to date with all the goals as they go in in the Football League. This is the Carabao Cup, ten minutes played, live on five, live on BBC Sounds. Goalless, Colwell, forward of the centre circle, Thiago Silva, feels to be free now of that jarred shoulder a few moments ago. Colwell midway through the Middlesbrough half, Chilwell, Middlesbrough have everybody behind the ball at the moment. Chelsea can't seem to find a, a way through. De Sassi at right back, far side, back towards Thiago Silva, and now it's with Colwell once again. Chilwell, but they're, they're playing in a, in a really safe area of the field as far as Middlesbrough are concerned. Yeah, Middlesbrough are happy out letting the two centre-backs have it, seeing try and break us down, they're staying compact, there's not much space between the lines. Falls is doing a fantastic job here because Mudrick and Chilwell are constantly interchanging, he's aware of them, he's looking over his shoulder. Ball over the top, Chilwell's made the run, Chilwell gets there with his header, and it just goes wide. He's complaining that he was checked by the goalkeeper, Glover. Of course, there is no VAR, so the flag had stayed down. Had that gone in, it would have counted. And Mudrick has actually shown a yellow card for descent to referee John Brooks. There's a good bit of vision to pick out the run of Chilwell. Yeah, it was a really good... It was another straight ball by Chelsea, but it's a good timed run by... Chilwell, who gets there in plenty of time, I think he could be a little bit braver, just on his in his left-hand view, he can see the goalkeeper coming, he knows he's going to get clattered, he's first to the ball, arms out, stretched up on his feet, asking for a penalty, I can't see it is, I think it's a coming together, I think it's a 50-50, I think that the goalkeeper, Tom Glover, is well within his right, in all honesty, I think Ben, ben, ben Chilwell should have hit the target there. First real chance of the game. What were your thoughts on that, Stuart Downing? I was just going to say Middlesbrough defending really well and then the only success I think Chelsea will get is runs from, from like that I think I said in the first leg that Michael's tactics is nothing through the middle of them in the middle of the park and you can see they're very compact he's happy for it to go wise but nothing comes through the middle of them so we've got to be aware of that for the runs from Fernandes and, and Chilwell because I think that that'll be the success that you know Chelsea will be looking to do If you look back over the last seven years and bear in mind it was a one-legged semi-final in 2021 nine ties have seen first leg leads but only one team has overturned a deficit to reach the final that was Chelsea in 2019 they lost at Spurs by a goal to nil they won here 2-1 at Stamford Bridge and then ultimately went through on penalties 4-2 in that shootout let's get an update from Reading in uh, in League One Sahel Sahi yeah 12 minutes played here Ian it's Reading nil Derby nil positive start from both sides and what's positive as well the Reading supporters they're keeping themselves off the pitch for now. Reading nil, Derby nil. Nil nil here in this League Cup semi-final second leg. Tomorrow night will be live at Craven Cottage. John Murray and Chris Sutton will describe the action of that game between Fulham and Liverpool. But this is Chelsea against Middlesbrough. And Middlesbrough are being obdurate opposition in these opening 13, 14 minutes. They are, but they're just starting to drift back. They're starting to defend what they've got. At one point there, Johnny Housen got in the ball. He was within 25 yards of his own goal and there was no one in front of him. So they just need to be careful that there's always an outlet, that they've got someone to find just to release that pressure. Here is uh, Sterling, collects the ball midway through the middles for a half. Out to De Sassi, right touch line. Links up with Palmer, who's been quiet so far. And he really has been a, a key figure. He's been involved in 16 goals in 18 starts for Chelsea. Nine, nine that he scored, seven assists as well. Here is Enzo Fernandez, prods the ball back to uh, to Colwell. So the Premier League side, as you'd expect, seeing a lot of the ball, but it's still nil-nil. 14 minutes played. De Sassi, far side the right, short diagonal ball inside to Fernandez. Sterling plays it back out to Palmer, who curls the ball in field. Colwell will leave it, has to stab it away from. Uh, first challenge and then Chilwell threads it through here is Sterling Sterling squares it brilliant Chelsea have equalised they prize open the middle for defence and brilliant right footed brings them
the Premier League side level inside a quarter of an hour. They lead by a goal to nil on the night. It's 1-1 on aggregate. Really, really good play by Raheem Sterling. He's cool, he's calm in the moment. He picks out a teammate. Not actually sure, Denno, if Broya actually scores it or if the recovering defender who knees it in. It rules. I think it's Johnny House and the captain of Middlesbrough. He's clapping his team. He's trying to get them forward, get their spirits up. But what a disappointing goal to concede. It bubbles into an empty net. But Chelsea back in the tie. It was Chilwell who was the instigator. It was a, a lovely through ball. Very unselfish from Raheem Sterling. And uh, as Broya tried to hook it goalwards, we'll wait to see whether it's classed as, a, as an own goal. Your thoughts on it, Stuart? It's a bit unlucky, I think, for Johnny House. To be fair, it's a great move. Chilwell just brilliant because it was a sloppy pass to start with. Force, meanwhile, has a shot charge down at the other end. Now for the tie as well. Middlesbrough straight away looking for an instant riposte. And Fors wins a corner kick for, uh, for Middlesbrough. But you're right, it has been confirmed as a Johnny Housen own goal for Chelsea. The unfortunate Middlesbrough captain for Broya's goal-bound effort as it's now taken short, that corner kick. Rolled in towards Force. Looks for the little layoff. This is Rogers with a shot! And it's a save by Petrovic low towards his right, but it was a well-worked move. Yeah, it was a really good well-worked move right off the training ground, a couple of passes. Morgan Rogers makes a run, just gets out of his feet and he tries to put it to the right-hand side of Petrovic. Gets down well, saves it. Good by Borough, good reaction. Michael Carrick will be delighted with his team. Stewart? I, thought, I think he should have went at far corner, Ian. I think he was set up there for the whip in the far corner. Um, I think he's maybe trying to keep it unsighted, but... Good move. I think it was good. I thought he was going to cross it around the back maybe for the for the bigger lads, but that was a great move and I think he should I think it's a great chance really he should score, shouldn't he? Did he just get it caught under his feet a little yeah. bit? That's why I think you know he should have went maybe far post with a whip, but Deezy's is out of here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Who might say I wasn't a striker? Is the joint top scorer in the uh, in the competition is uh, Morgan Rogers. He scored four goals, he's level with Cody Gakpo, who will uh, maybe look to try and increase his own tally tomorrow in that game at Craven Cottage that will bring you live from 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Here is Force. So Chelsea have made the start that they wanted. Mauricio Pochettino was talking about a positive start at the Riverside. It never materialised. They've got the goal. The level overall. 1-1 on aggregate. Though you look actually at their home form. In their 16 home games at Stamford Bridge in all competitions this season, they've won nine but only four of them, of those nine, would be sufficient to take Chelsea through after 90 minutes for you tonight. Would, you would think, Deno, that after drawing level in, in the tie on aggregate and having a huge possibility to go to Wembley and the advantage is now with you being the home team, I'd expect a little bit more from this home support. And still, it's quite flat here at the bridge. Yeah, certainly all the noise seems to be emanating from the, the shed end away towards our left as Thiago Silva hits a flat ball forward. Chilwell's getting so much room, he's getting forward a lot on this left-hand side. In fact, you'd have to say Chilwell is Chelsea's most dangerous and threatening player. He's the outlet ball, isn't he, at the minute? I think um, Mudrick's sort of holding the width and Chilwell keeps making that you know, run across uh, full-back and centre-back. And to be fair, he's got in two or three times, so we have to be careful with that one. Oxford United nil, Barnsley won. That sixth versus fifth in the uh, in League One in the uh, the playoff picture. There's Colwell in the centre circle to Thiago Silva. Now out to uh, Raheem Sterling. De Sassi tries to play it through to uh, to Palmer. De Sassi rolls it back. Thiago Silva now with Colwell. Anto Fernandez has made a run through the middle. Chilwell comes into that inverted role, if you like, into the centre of the field. Middlesbrough just dropped everybody back behind the ball once again. It's with uh, with Thiago Silva. But they've, uh, they've got the goal to ease the pressure, have Chelsea in these opening 19 minutes as they look for the run of Mudrick and it runs out and out for a goal kick, Glen Murray. And just watching Chelsea, we've got a really good vantage point here at Stamford Bridge and Chelsea have almost got five playing a flat five up front at times, really asking questions and pinning that Middlesbrough defence back, trying to get their midfield on the ball and if they don't get in the ball, it's allowing, especially Colwell it seems, to step in at the moment, he's picking a few wrong options, but if you keep giving him that licence, he will get it right. Engel clears downfield, outstretched right leg from Hackney, can't keep it in play. It'll go out for a Chelsea throw just over the halfway line. 
And it's set quickly back in. In action with Thiago Silva now to, uh, to Colwell. Mudrick makes the run in field. Chilwell is uh, pushing up on this near side. They're playing from right to left are Chelsea as we look. Here is Colwell. Mudrick, I don't think, was expecting that ball. He was expecting it to go long. No surprise to see him dispossessed. Crooks now for Middlesbrough. Over the halfway line. Enzo Fernandes helps win it back. Slides into the challenge with Vandenberg. Awkward for Barlasa to deal with that bouncing ball. It went over him. Broya opens it up and passes the ball out wide. Palmer has got a lot of space now for, uh, for Chelsea. Sterling is square of him if he wants him. Palmer finds Sterling. Sterling looks for the return ball, but he's overhit it. It will run through to Glover, who just puts his foot on it, and the Australian goalkeeper now has it in his hands. Yeah, just tries to buy his team a little bit of time, have a little breath, just try and regain their composure that they started so well with. But one thing Chelsea are doing extremely well is Enzo Fernandes is drifting to this left-hand side, he's pushing Johnny House and right back. Him, Mudrick and Chilwell are creating like a triangle that they just can't quite get to grips with at this right-back slot. Engel passes the ball to House and lays it off to Clark. Now with uh, with Dale Fry. This is uh, Barlasa just dropping in between the two central defenders. Hackney comes to help him out in the midfield. Short forward ball. Middlesbrough just starting to uh, get a few touches here and slowly but surely edge their way towards halfway line as they trail on the night, still level. That ball from Hackney is going to go astray, but it might stay in play. Gives Vandenberg something to chase and he gets there and then he overruns it in that foot chase with Chilwell and it goes out of play for a goal kick Mansfield 1 Sutton 1 is a latest score in League 2 up to date with the goals as they go in on BBC Radio 5 Live but uh, Chelsea with uh, Colwell Enzo Fernandez. they have certainly shown some good form at Stamford Bridge of, uh, of late unbeaten in eight since Brentford won here at the at the end of October. Edged out Newcastle, of course, in the quarterfinals in that 1-1 draw, going through on a penalty shootout. As it stands, we would have extra time. There are no away goals. They don't count, so if it's level on aggregate after the 90 minutes, then we would have extra time before we would have the potential for a penalty shootout. But we're only now midway through the first half. A lot of football still to be played here at Stamford Bridge. Chilwell to Thiago Silva. And they look quite patient, really, don't they, in that respect, Chelsea? They do more so now, I think, that there's a little bit more of a calmness about them. They're willing to just pop it round Middlesbrough and tie them out that way. The Sassy's diagonal ball looks for, uh, for Broya. I mean, straight away, the difference from the first leg is that they have a focal point in Broya. Yeah, and Broya, he's always trying to stretch that play, and obviously a Borough player has got to go with him, which is creating a little bit of a pocket of space for Chelsea players to try and get on with it. Here is uh, Colwell. That goal still hasn't pierced the, uh, the enthusiasm of the travelling support behind the goal of Tom Glover towards our left-hand side. Here is uh, Thiago Silva, out to his right-back to Sassi. Holds the width, shown on the inside by Hackney. Now with, uh, with Colwell, there's no pressure at all on the uh, the back line for, uh, for Chelsea. Chilwell to Enzo Fernandez, plays it back to uh, to Colwell. Two central defenders have all the time in the world. Here is uh, Thiago Silva. The Sassi once again stays out wide, right. Here is Palmer, nice little turn. No natural width on the left. Now it's provided by Chilwell, but they tried to go through the middle and there was no route through. Rogers now for Middlesbrough. Surrounded by four royal blue shirts. Enzo Fernandez to De Sassi. Chelsea coming forward. De Sassi shoots from distance, strikes Clark, falls to Enzo Fernandez, leaves it for Palmer, slips on the edge of the D, back to his feet. Palmer, edge of the penalty area, back heels the ball and allows Vandenberg to find Rogers for Middlesbrough. Hackney, forward ball. Crooks might break here for Middlesbrough. The covering run has got to be from Colwell. And he had the pace to get there before Crooks did. Out of play goes for a throw. It was fortunate how that ball got through, but brilliant oh, play by Levi Colwell, just covering over to Thiago Silva's side, who was out of the game. Good awareness by the young Chelsea centre-back. You've got a feel for Middlesbrough in the respect that with Isaiah Jones having that hamstring injury at the weekend, Stuart, they've lost a, a real threat with, with a pace as an outlet. Yeah, you're thinking of him in that space, aren't you, breaking away there? If they'd have had him and Rodgers together, that would have been a right um, good outlet for them, but... You know, if they be patient minutes like this, they will get opportunities. There is space there to attack. They just need to get the 
foot back in the game again and you know, put some passes together like they are now doing, just take the sting out of the game a little bit. We've got Stuart Downing and Glenn Murray with us here tonight on BBC Radio 5 Live at Stamford Bridge. While Lassa finds uh, Dale Fry, made his debut nine years ago at the age of uh, 17. He's uh, approaching 250 appearances for the club, is, uh, is Dale Fry who once helped England's under-20s win the World Cup in 2017 with players such as Ezra Consa, Calvert-Lewin and Dean Henderson. As Cole Palmer, this latest generation for the English talent, exchanges passes with Raheem Sterling midway through the middles for a half. 25 minutes play. Chelsea lead on the night by a goal to nil. 1-1 overall. Palmer back to, uh, to Colwell. To Sassi. Far side the right. Engel went to close him down. And now it's with Caicedo able to turn, albeit a long way round outside the centre circle. Referee John Brooks almost in the way. Good footwork though by Enzo Fernandez. Middlesbrough at the minute are trying to have to contain Chelsea. It's Caicedo treads it through. Enzo Fernandez looking for the run of Mudrick round the back of Vandenberg. That was awkward. And uh, Vandenberg was. No doubt relieved to see it roll out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, Vandenberg just got there, he was almost too late. Mudrick's just almost nipped in behind him, but that was right after Enzo Fernandez got it and he, he, he got his head up and he, he wanted to play Mudrick on the first instance, didn't make the run, told the young man, I want, I need you in behind the set of the fullback there. Second time he gets it, Mudrick makes that run and almost makes the difference. Glover. Hits a, a flat goal kick, bounces off the chest of De Sassi, falls to Hackney. Highly rated young midfielder for, uh, for Middlesbrough. Barlas's early ball looked a little hurried, went straight towards Caicedo. Enzo Fernandez released it to Palmer. Palmer looked to get Sterling in, blocked by the heel of Clark. Palmer tries to slide another ball through towards Broyer. Palmer certainly benefiting in that role where he's not necessarily asked to lead the line as he was a fortnight ago with his vision. Such a talent, yeah. uh, looking to make his influence in this game. Cole Palmer, he'll be a growing influence on this game. He's more central this evening, that's where he can affect games in between those pockets. Just got it there, just got his angle slightly wrong, but giving it more times than off than he will make Middlesbrough pay, without doubt. I was looking at Michael Carrick's record in semi-finals. I mean, this is uh, such an elegant player, uh, former England international. 34 caps for his country. Of course, he won the League Cup three times with Manchester United five Premier Leagues, an FA Cup, Champions League and a Club World Cup, so he won the whole lot. He actually played in 19 semi-finals. You forget, for three successive years, he reached the, the last four of the Champions League. But of those 19, he only lost seven, won ten and drew two. He's had a semi-final experience, if you like, as a, as a manager. The playoffs last year when they were beaten by Coventry City. He asked his supporters that dare to dream well, at the minute, I wouldn't say those dreams have been dashed, but they've certainly been tempered with a goal for uh, for Chelsea. As here is uh, Colwell, and I don't know what the possession stats are, but they'll be heavily loaded in favour of the uh, the Premier League side, because yeah, the they are completely dominating. The last time I looked, it was 70% Chelsea, but Middleton just need to... Back heel from Sterling to Disassi, cuts it back, Broyer is there, it'll fall to Enzo Fernandez, and Enzo Fernandez tucks the ball in, and inside the half an hour... Middlesbrough's lead has been overturned and Chelsea now are in pole position and their dominance has produced two goals. They lose 2-0 on the night, 2-1 on aggregate and it's Enzo Fernandez with the goal. Yes, Enzo Fernandez wheels away, knee slides into the corner and all of a sudden Stamford Bridge is very noisy. A little bit fortunate how the goal came about, Di Sassi crosses it, I think it was Broyer has a swipe but it misses it and it just falls to the onrushing Enzo Fernandez in the back stick who kicks it high into the back of the net gives the goalkeeper no chance Chelsea 2-1 and in full control of this tie totally unmarked Enzo Fernandez he wasn't going to miss from six yards out full control Stuart Downing Middlesbrough now are going to have to just uh, well do they have to change tack immediately I wouldn't say immediately no I'd say at least till half time or a little bit after just Sort of keep playing the way you are a little bit. You know, they can't go gung ho now because you know it could go three, four, five. You don't want to get a little bit messy. So, but on Chelsea's part, it was great when they played down the right hand side. And I think Fernandez, you know, gets his uh, reward for his anticipation and carry on his run and sort of plays off the back of Johnny Alson and 
got to say it's a great finish. Those uh, possession stats, by the way. Chelsea currently 67%. Uh, Dundee have got a second goal at Tyne Castle. Hearts nil. Dundee 2 is their latest score. But 2 nil here. And it's Chelsea now who lead by two goals to one on aggregate. And uh, no surprise in the balance of play. No, no surprise, Deno. Chelsea have been good. They're, they've manipulated the ball. They've manipulated Middlesbrough. And unfortunately, it was the man that we, we sort of give a lot of credit to, the experienced one. The Middlesbrough is Johnny House and the Enzo just runs off. Johnny House and just gets caught looking at the ball. Enzo, he's aware, makes that back post run and Johnny House and looks over his shoulder and his man's putting the ball in the back of the net. So Middlesbrough trailing 2-0. Chelsea certainly showing plenty of hunger with that with Broya. They get a throw on this near side. It's imperative now for the championship team that they don't concede again before half time. Yes, it is, and they were so good for the first 10 minutes. They were brave on the ball, but at the moment, they're just giving Chelsea the ball. They're giving up possession, and without the ball, running is so much harder. Profligate in front of goal a fortnight ago. Not so tonight. They've had three chances. They've taken two of them, and they lead 2-0 as uh, Sterling to Thiago Silva. Colwell left of the centre circle. Mudrick is available to him on this near side but it's those two central defenders who are just able to dictate at the back they've got options left and right all through the middle Palmer looks for the ball around the back and for Sterling Sterling delivers the cross Enzo Fernandez getting forward headed out by Vandenberg flicked away by Crooks but it looks like it might keep coming back no falls finds Morgan Rogers chance now for Middlesbrough to break Morgan Rogers running forward Rogers ball wouldn't go with him and in the end it was brought away by Colwell it was unfortunate on that occasion, Morgan Rogers, and now Colwell finds Sterling. And it's the Chelsea crowd who urged Sterling to go on. Bizarrely, he seems to slow down to allow Middlesbrough to get numbers back. And then he delivers the cross. Had he picked up the ball and just run it uh, at Engel, the left-back, that would have seen the, uh, the more logical choice for the uh, England international. I think he was just waiting to get numbers up with him, but do you know what? He did slow the game down. Then he speeded up and he put a great ball across. Broyer made the front post run. He just needed someone else with him. But just before that, it was Morgan Rodgers who got towards the Chelsea 18 yard box. And they are the moments that the championship side need to make better decisions in. They're not going to get up there much, not with Chelsea's dominance so far. So they need to make amends when they do. Half time at Bolton. Mike, Mike Miner. Bolton 1 0 up at the break over Cheltenham. The goal came with Victor Adebayejo. Nicked the ball off a defender, threw one on one and put it into the bottom right hand corner. One big close range chance of both sides since. Bolton's needed a touch from two yards out that never came. Cheltenham denied by the feet of Nathan Baxter. Half time, Bolton 1, Cheltenham 0. 33 minutes played here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea lead by two goals to nil. Here is uh, Chilwell on this near side, the left. Back to, uh, to Colwell. Every outfield player is in the middle for a half as Chelsea play from right to left, as uh, Thiago Silva just jogs his way forward. And again, manages to pick out Palmer. Palmer looking to Enzo Fernandez. Scuffed effort straight at Glover. Let's get an update from Reading. Sahil Sahi. Yeah, 32 minutes played here. Reading nil, Derby nil. Both sides still going for each other. Not really creating any chances. It's still very interesting, though. Awaiting the first goal of the evening. Reading nil, Derby nil. Looks like it could. Ooh, that was a risky back pass by Barlasa to, uh, to Glover. No wonder he complains that his midfielder almost sold him very, very short. Yeah, just before that, what a brilliant bit of play by Cole Palmer. Just getting on that half turn, realising Enzo was going through the middle, pokes it through. And in all fairness, Enzo Fernandez will be disappointed. He should have had his second of the evening. You know, from a tactical point of view, the fact that the two central defenders have got so much time on the ball that allows the midfield players ahead of them. Middlesbrough then have got so many problems because they've got so many runners off the ball hitting offside against Sterling. Well, out of possession, Chelsea are playing two at the back, aren't they? And it's just allowing the front... I don't know how many is it nine. I can't have a math to slip me. But the, the front eight, just, just, to, just to have a merry-go-round of movement for, for the two centre-backs to pick out. And unfortunately, Borough just can't quite get the grips with it. I'm surprised that Michael Carrick hasn't made a change and just uh, released someone to try and stop that dominance of the centre-backs. How do you combat that, Stuart? Because Middlesbrough are getting suffocated. It's difficult. It's difficult, isn't it? Especially when you're obviously going behind now and Chelsea are growing in confidence. Uh, but I think from the start, maybe they should have tried that tactic you know, early on. Um, like you say, because Thiago Silva and, and Colwell are just passing it to each other, sort of shifting Middlesbrough's shape. Rodgers is released from a forward ball by Barlasa. 
effort. It was well defended by Chelsea. They look it up towards uh, Broya, headed out by Dale Fry, brought down off the chest by Mudrick. Mudrick is challenged by Force. Little flick by Vandenberg. Crooks plays a, a ball that means that Housen has got into a sliding challenge with uh, with Broya, and he wins the ball back. And now Middlesbrough will try and build from the back. We've got ten minutes to go in this first half, but after uh, a confident opening six, seven minutes, they, they've struggled against Chelsea's intensity and the way that Chelsea are coming forward. Here is uh, Mudrick. Mudrick tries to lift it forward. Engel is tucked in the left back, prevents it from reaching Sterling. And now it's back with Barlasa, who's able to turn midway through his own half. He finds Hayden Hackney. Caicedo slips, allows Hackney to play the ball short. The return ball from Barlasa back towards Hackney. Now with fours on this right-hand side. And Middlesbrough eventually gets some bodies further down the field in the all-red as they play from left to right. Nine minutes remain, trailing 2-0 on the night. Housen, diagonal ball, intercepted by a sliding Chilwell out for a throw. I think the one positive that Michael Carrick will take out of this first half is that when his team have been composed on the ball and they have found those five-yard passes and been brave in possession, they have got into that Chelsea back four, so there is opportunities, they just need to be calm. De Sassi steps out of defence with the interception, now it's with Sterling, Sterling towards De Sassi! Well, De Sassi started the move and he's finished it and he might well have finished off the challenge of Middlesbrough as well because that was superb by Chelsea and nine minutes before half-time they race into a 3-0 lead on the night and De Sassi has scored his first goal since the opening day. Well, I might have been being a little bit positive there in a, from a Middlesbrough point of view because Chelsea have just undone them, they were swift, they were quick they were deadly on the attack, and it's disaster who just arrives into the box unmarked, meets the ball at the front post, and he won't get an easier opportunity. Passes it into the bottom corner, wheels away, really enjoying that moment. And we can just see Michael Carrick looking out, looks fed up, looks frustrated. His team have been put to the sword in this first 45 minutes here at Stamford Bridge. Raheem Sterling has been absolutely devastating down that right hand side. That was ruthless. Yeah, quality from Chelsea. I think it comes from the square pass from McLark to the into midfield. Didn't really look comfortable playing it in there. And you'd have to say it was a great break. Uh, and Raheem, like you said there, he's been deadly, hasn't he? Cut backs, final pass, and that's what Middlesbrough have to get better back. When they get chances like that in them positions, their final ball has to be better. Well, Middlesbrough now are looking for two goals away from home and without conceding any more, as we still have eight minutes to go towards half time. And any hopes of Middlesbrough trying to get to the break without conceding a game. We said that that next goal would be crucial. De Sassi just stepping forward. And it was it was the, the pace of it from Chelsea. It was devastating. Yeah, it was. It was deadly. It was, uh, it was what you expect from Chelsea in a team of this much talent. And you said that they're not a team. They're not at the top of the show. They're starting to look like one. They look fluid tonight. They look good. It looks like they're going to get to a final. And this could be the start of something special for Chelsea. Well, they are on course for four successive home wins for the first time since March 2022 as they lead by three goals to nil. And also, as well, we talked about a season-defining week for them. The Chelsea players have certainly responded. Mudrick tries to dart forward into the penalty area. Housen will shepherd the ball back. Long, long way back now for Michael Carrick's side. Yeah, it's been... A game that this Middlesbrough group and the fans and the town itself will have looked forward to for days. The anticipation around the place and all of a sudden, within the first 38 minutes, it's starting to become a nightmare. Well, they had 18 shots in the first leg, did Chelsea. Only five were on target. But they probably created five opportunities tonight, Stuart, and they lead 3-0. You know, yeah, they've shown a real clinical side in front of goal tonight. Yeah, and I know Roger, I think he, him coming into the team with that focal point has definitely helped him. I think it's, you know, in the first leg, I think too many people were coming to the ball, dropping too deep. Just his movement, you might not see it, but, you know, off the ball, he's making a lot of runs without getting the ball, but he's creating a lot of space for them, them number 10 and wide players. So, you know, he's definitely been a difference, I think. Here is uh, Housen, just over the halfway line for a Middlesbrough side that must feel a, a little shell shocks. They've conceded three goals in the space of 21 minutes in this first half 
and there's not a real a great deal that Michael Carrick can do about that as we've got five minutes to go at a half time I think the way that Chelsea have approached this game has been very professional they've known what they've wanted they've been patient in possession they've prodded when they've needed to and when the chances have arisen they have been clinical they've been Questioned a lot this season about not having a, an out-and-out out nine, not being clinical enough as a group, but tonight, without doubt, they have been. That was a little late. Crooks on Enzo Fernandez. Uh, John Brooks, the referee, will show him a yellow card. And um, Enzo Fernandez is just being tended to by two of his teammates. But uh, a yellow card, second yellow card of the night. He joins Mudrick in the book. Yeah, bad touch. the combative midfielder bad touch from Enzo Fernandez. he just lows Crooks in and the big frame of the Middlesbrough forward clatters into the Argentinian full force just wait and see it does catch the Argentinian I don't think it's any more than that I think the referee's got that one right the yellow card doesn't sound like a mausoleum now does it well, I wouldn't expect it to Den oh geez it's taken three goals to get them off their feet but it looks like they're heading to Wembley Four minutes to go to half-time. Mudrick on the stretch, gets the ball back. Finds Palmer. Sterling is out wide right. Palmer chips the ball forward, and it goes in between the run of Chilwell and Enzo Fernandez. And it's picked up by Tom Glover, the Australian keeper, who'll just hold on to it as uh, Middlesbrough think about trying to get to us a half-time without conceding again. Yeah, we've got four minutes to half-time, and I think Middlesbrough will just be very very fortunate to get into that change room and just try and compose themselves i think there'll be a, a deadly silence around the place because they've been shell-shocked ball from hackney police defense under pressure palmer profits and palmer rolls the ball into the bottom left hand corner and middles were so sloppy have been punished palmer let them off in the first leg he could have had a hat-trick he's not letting them off tonight and chelsea are now leading Middlesbrough 4-0. Cole Palmer does it again. Too easy for the young Englishman. He gets in, makes no mistake, has a little feint, sends the goalkeeper, then just rolls it casually into the corner with the style we know he possesses. Far too easy from a Chelsea point of view. Middlesbrough will be absolutely kicking themselves. It was Hackney's ball, I think, back to yeah. Barlassa, and Barlassa wasn't expecting it. He was never going to control them. No. Very sloppy. I, mean, I think it's a little bit of inexperience, isn't it? I think, you know, a more experienced player, even the keeper, really. You're 3-0 down, you're trying to get to half-time, just play it longer. Get up to get up from, get over the ball, try and get some press, take some pressure off, sorry. And they play it in the square, and that's what Chelsea are waiting for. They're waiting to pounce. They've already done it once on the last goal and they've been punished again, so I think it's just a little bit of a lack of experience in the wrong area. I think that will be the disappointing thing for Michael Carrick, isn't it? All the goals have probably been preventable. Yeah. Well, they've lost it again. This is Palmer. Middlesbrough are all over the place at the back. Caicedo towards Sterling. They just need to get to half-time to regroup. I mean, the tie is gone, but they've now got to make sure that they don't suffer a hammering. Yeah, they do well. 4-0 I mean this is a hammer in all fairness it's still the first half but yeah they need to try and save face and if it wasn't for Cole Palmer desperate to get it back onto that wand of a left foot of his yeah. and he hit it with his right he could have been walking in at half time five down what's the next step up from a hammering a drubbing depends where you're from in the country I think Denno well we've got 90 seconds to go to half time an embarrassment and uh, that was it <laughs> an embarrassment yeah yeah I think yeah yeah, well, I mean, it was always going to be a, a tall order for uh, for Middlesbrough, but the manner, as you say, of some of the goals have, will, will be a, a source of frustration. Yeah, I think when they, they sit down and break this game down and look back and they, for the best way to describe it, probably schoolboy errors and errors they don't make in the championship and to make them here on such an important night for the club and for the group from a growth perspective, perspective is it'll, it'll be disappointing it'll be a hard pill to swallow but you know what right now they've just got a safe face keep a bit of pride in the tie and look at trying to get promoted out of the championship in the Premier League which is the main key for, for Michael Carrick and this group well on the ground where it was described as a mausoleum I think I can say with a great deal of certainty that Middlesbrough's prospects are a little grave 
They are indeed, they are, they are indeed. I think from a neutral point of view, it's just a little bit disappointing. You wanted Middlesbrough to come here, be a bit more resolute, uh, make more of a game of it, I suppose. But Chelsea, in all fairness, they've been questioned a lot over this last 18 months, and I think they've looked superb tonight. There could be a few more of those jokes, by the way, in the second half when it's 4-0 uh, to, uh, to Chelsea. As Clark with the, uh, the cushion header towards Fry, hits it away uh, downfield. We'll wait to see how much stoppage time there will be from the, uh, the fourth official down below. But Chelsea leading Middlesbrough by four goals to nil. Ball played inside by Fours to Crooks in the penalty area for Middlesbrough. Back towards Fro uh, Fours. Caicedo is there and uh, Fours then. They can go out behind for, uh, for a goal kick. And it's just the two minutes of additional time. Two minutes. I think that was two that Lady Kelly was telling me that it was added on. Either that or maybe she I isn't pleased to see me alongside her on the... Yeah, I didn't see which way the fingers were facing, to be honest, then. Well, she is a lady after all. Uh, it was peace, or it was the other one, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, two minutes of added on time, and uh, Chelsea are 4-0 up. Here is uh, Enzo Fernandez. Looking actually at the statistics, Middlesbrough haven't scored in their last nine trips to Stamford Bridge. They've lost eight and drawn one. Alan Boxic was the last player to score for them under Steve McLaren in 2001. I think I might have played in a couple of them, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> that was why. We, we might revisit that in the second half. We've got plenty to talk about, Stuart. <laughs> here, is, uh, here is Chilwell. Left-hand side, Mudrick looks for the return ball. Vandenberg tries to hold him. Chilwell, though, will continue that run and he's helped out by Housen. And it runs behind for a, a corner kick. Chelsea's quality has come to the fore. All of that 486 million pounds. It has indeed. It's been uh, it's been exceptional this evening. Uh, one of the most expensive ones, Enzo, with a goal at the back post, and we see a corner. And this is this is Middlesbrough just trying to to keep this respectful. I think at the moment. Yes. It's going to be. Chilwell with a corner on the left-hand side. It's an outswing. It's going to come to the edge of the area. Mudrick can't get there. Housen darted out of the penalty area to get there first. Caicedo, though, will uh, retrieve it. And he plays the ball back to uh, to Petrovic. Then Petrovic sweeps it out towards Sterling. But Middlesbrough, quite a high line at the moment of that, uh, that back four as Palmer and Sterling just exchange passes over on that far right-hand side as uh, some of the supporters around us are going to try and beat the queue. As the half-time whistle has sounded... And Chelsea are on their way to Wembley. They lead by four goals to nil. Middlesbrough, with the exception of a Rogers shot, have offered very little. But uh, a house and own goal after 15 minutes. Enzo Fernandez, 14 minutes later, made it two. De Sassi, with a breakout from the back, added a third. And then Palmer profited from a mistake to roll in the four. Glenn and Stewart will stay where they are because Chelsea four, Middlesbrough nil is the half time score. Kevin. Dennis, thank you very much. Hey, Glenn, it, it hasn't been the, the first half that Middlesbrough fans would have wanted to see, but for Chelsea, it's been clinical in a way that we, we haven't seen from them this season. Yeah, that's true, it has. This has been the Chelsea team that they came to play tonight. They knew what was at stake and, and they've put this Middlesbrough. Yes, they're, they're a championship team, but listen, it's the same team that beat Chelsea up in Middlesbrough only, only 10 days ago. They've come with a, a different mindset. They know what's at stake. They know there's a big day out at Wembley. They know this is a project and they know they've got the world to prove wrong because everything, everyone's questioning the money they've spent, what they've done here at the football club, the, the changes they've made. And right now, it's looking like good money spent. This project looks like it could be getting off the ground. The first 10, 15 minutes were, were really good from, from Middlesbrough, but will they look at the way in which they conceded those four yeah. goals and, and kick themselves? I was quite confident, Kelly. I think the first 15 minutes have settled well, didn't they? got a few passes together and you're thinking, oh, here we go, you know, Chelsea were a bit, not nervy, but a few sloppy passes. Wasn't sort of happening for them, but I think once Chelsea scored, you could see the quality start to happen. They, they upped the level, even the speed of the pass was better. Some of the goals have been brilliant, but I'd have to say, on Middles' part, a bit of naivety, a bit of inexperience, especially the last goal, you know, you're 3-0 down, just play it a little bit longer, get to half-time, regroup a little bit. And obviously the tie was already over anyway, but you know they'll, they'll have to learn lessons from that because when you play against big teams, they wait for their mistakes and they punish you. What can they do at, at half time now with the score at 4-0, at 4-1 on, on aggregate? What can Middlesbrough do in the in the dressing room now? Lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have done that on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. 
I think it's obviously difficult for Michael. He's going to have to, obviously, you're playing for pride. You, you know, you've got to think a lot of travelling fans. You've got to keep running around, you know, not, not sulking and not, you know, pointing the blame at it. It's a team, obviously, effort. And, you know, Chelsea might the second half, you know, just start moving their all out and take the foot off the gas a little bit. But Middlesbrough, obviously, need to get some pride. If they get a goal back or two, great. But obviously, the way it's going, Chelsea today up the level, it could get, you know, a little bit embarrassing. So they've got to stick together because it's going to be a tough second half for them. Yeah, I think that's important what Stuart says there. You, you, I mean, that group downstairs, I'll be feeling sorry for themselves right now, but you have got to look at it from a different perspective and look at all those fans, those 4,000 travelling fans and what they've they've done and the commitment they've made to get down here and they've got to just try and keep it respectful. Listen, I know 4-0, it's, it's bordering on embarrassing. Uh, it, it's a really harsh word to use and I don't like to use it, but they need to think about those guys and, and, and just try and try and keep it at four at least or, or like Stuart says, get a couple back. Glenn Murray, Stuart Downing and Ian Dennis will be back with you for the second half here at Stamford Bridge where Middlesbrough will be disappointed with the way the first half has gone but Chelsea will be looking to build on that 4-0 scoreline. They're 4-1 up on aggregate and as things stand they are heading to Wembley where they'll face either Liverpool or Fulham. That second leg takes place tomorrow night. You'll be able to listen to that on Five Live Sport as well. Reading taking on Derby, that one's reached half-time, Sahel Sahi. Yeah, half-time here, Kelly, nil-nil, no goals, but it's still interesting. Both teams, they've ventured forward whenever possible, but the final pass, the final delivery has been missing. Both sides hit the post, by the way, but both times it was offside. The Reading fans, they're keeping to their word. They said there'd be no repeat of the pitch invasion that saw their previous home game with Port Vale to be called off, and so far, so good, fingers crossed. So half-time here, Kelly, Reading nil Derby nil. So far, so good. Sahail, Sahail Sahi is back with us, for, uh, with giving us regular updates rather from Reading against Derby throughout the evening. Everywhere else, it's a 7:45 kickoff. So let's head to Bolton against Cheltenham and Mike Miney. Yeah, we are three minutes into the second half here. Bolton one, Cheltenham nil. Promotion chasing Bolton uh, a goal to the good. But I'm not actually sure you know the difference in the league position between the two sides. Having a look at it, the Robins have come here to give Bolton a real go. Two chances through Rob Street before Wanderers took the lead through Victor Adeboyejo. He took the ball off a defender, threw one on one and rolled it into the bottom right-hand corner. After that, two chances from close range, one for each side. Bolton powered a ball right across the six-yard box. Three players, two in a Cheltenham shirt, one in a Bolton shirt, millimetres away from connecting on the end of it. Any touch and it's in the back of the net. And Cheltenham at the other end through George Lloyd. He was inside the six-yard box, fired his shot straight at the legs of Nathan Baxter. In the second half, both sides feeling each other out again. Similar pattern to the first half. It is, though, Bolton 1, Cheltenham 0. Thank you very much for that. So we've got reporters at Reading, Derby and Bolton against Cheltenham. Mike Mine is there, so Hales at Reading. Elsewhere in League One, Bristol Rovers are 1-0 down at home to Exeter. It's 2-2 between Charlton and Northampton. Oxford are trailing Barnsley by a goal to nil, and it's Wigan 0 Wickham nil. Those games just kicking off in the second half there. In League Two, Bradford won, Salford won, Mansfield won, Sutton United won, MK Dons 3 0 up uh, against Wimbledon. In the National League, it's Fylde 2, Halifax 0, Aldershot 1, Bromley 0, Chesterfield 1, Woking 0, Dagenham and Redbridge 0, uh, Dorking Wanderers 0, Hartlepool 0, Kidderminster 0, Maidenhead 0, Ebsbury 0. Oldham 1, Barnet 0 and Oxford 0, York City 1. In the Scottish Premiership, it is Hearts 0, Dundee 2. We'll keep you up to date with everything that's happening this evening. There's also a busy night in the Africa Cup of Nations. So as it stands, Angola are 1-0 up against Burkina Faso. Mauritania are 1-0 up against Algeria, which means that Angola and Burkina Faso will qualify as group winners and runners-up respectively. Mauritania are now third in the group. Algeria are bottom. Earlier on, late, late drama as Cameroon needed an 87th minute own goal equaliser and a stoppage time winner to beat Gambia 3-2. That means that Cameroon qualify for the knockout stages as runners-up from Group C. In the other game, Senegal beat Guinea 2-0 to finish as group winners. We'll be talking about the latest on Mohamed Salah's fitness. Of course, he suffered an injury for uh, Egypt while playing in the Africa Cup of Nations. And we'll be heading back to Stamford Bridge for the second half of Chelsea against Middlesbrough with Chelsea 4-0 up on the night, 4-1 up on aggregate. That's coming up after the BBC News with Nick Hatfield. Listen on BBC Sounds. This 
is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you, Kelly. Good evening. A man who stabbed three people to death in Nottingham has had his manslaughter pleas accepted on the grounds of diminished responsibility due to a serious mental illness. Two 19-year-old students, Barnaby Webber and Grace O'Malley Kumar, along with 65-year-old school caretaker Ian Coates, were attacked by Valdo Kalakani last June. Grace's father, Sanjoy, says he's disappointed by the decision. At the end of the day, when you strip everything away, these children were walking home from a great night out. They were attacked brutally on the way home. And it is absolutely abhorrent, I think, that he has been able to have a defence of diminished responsibility. Rishi Sunak insists the UK and US aren't looking for a confrontation with Houthi fighters in Yemen. Britain joined America for a second time in taking military action against the group, which is attacking ships in the Red Sea. Scotland's National Clinical Director has defended his decision to routinely delete messages relating to the pandemic. Professor Jason Leach told the UK COVID inquiry he was following official policy which required advisers to keep records of decisions rather than discussions. Donald Trump and Nikki Haley have been meeting voters in New Hampshire who are taking part in the Republican presidential primary. Opinion polls suggest Mr Trump has a clear lead over his rival. Our correspondent Emma Vardy is in New Hampshire. For the anti-Trump Republicans, for them, this is seen as the last gasp attempt to try to stop Donald Trump becoming the inevitable Republican nominee to go on and face Joe Biden in the presidential election in November. Trump's uh, other rivals have dropped out. It's down to between him and the uh, former UN ambassador Nikki Haley. But it's quite a long shot for her. The French energy firm EDF has revealed the Hinkley Point C nuclear plant in Somerset could be delayed by up to four years. The project could also end up costing as much as £8 billion more than planned. And Oppenheimer, Barbie and Killers of the Flower Moon are all up for the best film at this year's Oscars. Nominees in the Best Actor category include Bradley Cooper and Killian Murphy. The Best Actress list features Kerry Mulligan, Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone. Match of the day, Africa top 10. Join Yaya Toure, Ifana Koku and Gabriel Zakwani as they pick the best of African football from the all-time greatest AFCON winning teams. There's some disagreement here. <laughs> to the greatest AFCON moments. I'm actually surprised I'm not in this. <laughs> Match of the day, Africa top 10 from the BBC World Service. Listen on BBC Sounds. Let's do this. <laughs> I won't argue anymore. <laughs> This is Five Live Sports with Kelly Cates on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Still 45 minutes to go at Stamford Bridge, but it looks like Chelsea are on their way to Wembley. They are 4-0 up against Middlesbrough on the night. They're 4-1 up on aggregate in their EFL Cup semi-final second leg. Commentary coming up of the second half of tonight's game and commentary of the other EFL Cup semi-final, Fulham against Liverpool, from 8 o'clock on Wednesday night on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Liverpool are 2-1 up on aggregate there. But Mo Salah's hamstring injury, he's on Africa Cup of Nations duty, has turned out to be worse than first feared and that means he could be out for three to four weeks. Here's Liverpool's assistant boss, Pep Linders. You should never doubt the commitment of Mo Salah. I know the country is devastated losing him. We were devastated to hear that he uh, got injured. He plays the first game, scores, assists, captain, massive importance, of course. But the only reason why he, our medical team and their medical team, decided for him to come back is to give him the best possible chance to be available in the final, if Egypt reached the final. What I'm really happy about, and that's... The medical team of Egypt and the medical team of uh, Liverpool Football Club really worked together and were really in close contact and they both made this decision. It's an example how international football with club football should cooperate to put the player in the centre. Uh, That was Pep Linders talking about the recovery of Mohamed Salah. Liverpool will want him back, Egypt will want him back should they progress to the latter stages of the Africa Cup of Nations. Stuart Downing is here at Stamford Bridge. Liverpool's record without Mo Salah isn't too bad. They're unbeaten without him, but that doesn't mean that they want to be without him for potentially more than three weeks. 
Yeah, I think it's okay, Kelly, for a couple of games. Maybe you can get through it, but I think over a long period, Mo Salah's a massive miss. Um, there's no doubt that his goals, what he brings to the team, and they've obviously got some big games coming up in the, the business end of the season, really. So that's a bit of a big blow, and I, I listen to Jürgen Kopp through the week saying, selfishly, he'd like Mo Salah back as quick as possible. That even before the tournament started, he wanted him knocked out, which is, just shows how important he is. Uh, but Liverpool have tickled on quite nicely at the minute, but like I say, over a long period of time, he will be a big miss. I mean, they've talked about the levels of communication between national side and, and the club. The, yeah. the Egypt team doctor uh, said we wanted this statement about Salah coming back to, to Liverpool for treatment to be out after the game. The level of communication with Liverpool reached the point where they were speaking five times a day for half an hour on, on each call. But he, he's coming back to the UK for, for treatment. Does it make sense that his, his club would be the ones to, to manage his recovery? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, that's his bread and butter. Don't get me wrong, I know he's, he's committed to his country like like we, we all are when we play, but I think, you know, the club pay your wages. You know, that's, that's the club you're playing for week in, week out, then fans. And, and like you say, he's probably looking, thinking, I want to get back as quick as possible. So to be around his home comfort, be around the team, and like I say, he's obviously watching them train and stuff like that, but he'll, he'll just want to be close to it, knowing Farmer well, when he's ready to go, he's there. I don't think it's right for him to be in Egypt getting treatment. That's my own personal opinion. I think he should be back at Liverpool in the club that pays your wages. So, Mohamed Salah getting treatment back in the UK and Liverpool will be hoping they can get him back as quickly as possible. At one stage, it did look as though he might be back should Egypt reach the latter stages of the, of the tournament, uh, but that injury is worse than first feared. Elsewhere, England have confirmed that Ben Folks will keep wicket for the first test against India, which begins on Thursday. England's rugby union coach Steve Borthwick looks set to be without centre Ollie Lawrence and hooker Luke Cowan Dickey for their Six Nations opener against Italy. Both got injuries at the weekend and have withdrawn from the training camp in Girona. And a reminder that Tennis Breakfast will be back on air at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning on Sports Extra. You can join Gigi Salmon, Russell Fuller, and their guests for the second day of singles quarterfinals from the Australian Open in Melbourne. Second half due to kick off here at Stamford Bridge. Very shortly, looks like Middlesbrough might be about to make a substitution. We'll get news on that very shortly. But first, we're going to head back to Bolton to find out what's happening with Mike Mine. Yeah, Bolton still lead 1-0, but Cheltenham had the ball in the back of the net. It won't count. Free kick swung in from the right. Header parried by the goalkeeper before the follow-up went in. But then the flag went up. Cheltenham furious with the decision. Captain Sean Long remonstrating with the assistant referee for quite a while. It won't stand, though. So Bolton, who want promotion from League One this season, still lead by a goal to nil. Mike, thank you very much. Regular updates from those games this evening. We'll keep you across everything that's happening in the EFL and in Scotland with your commentary team here at Stamford Bridge for the second half of the second leg of this EFL Cup semi-final. Stuart Downing is with Glenn Murray and Ian Dennis. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, a couple of alterations to, uh, to tell you about. One each. Madawaka has replaced Mudrick for, uh, for Chelsea who have just joined us, are leading by four goals to nil on the night, and so they will be going through to play either Fulham or Liverpool in the final on Sunday the 25th of, uh, of Feb. And the Middlesbrough change is Anthony dyke Steele, who uh, actually hasn't played since the 29th of December against Huddersfield. He has come on to replace the Finnish international Marcus Fors. So uh, Chelsea line up with Petrovic in goal, De Sassi, Thiago Silva, Colwell and Chilwell, is the defence, Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo, Palmer, Sterling, uh, Madawaka and Broya for Chelsea. They're in their royal blue shirts and shorts and, uh, and white socks against a Middlesbrough side who are all in red, who have Tom Glover in goal, Vandenberg, Fry, Clark and Engel, like Steele, House and Barlassa, Crooks, Hackney and, and Rogers. Uh, Stuart Downing. And Glenn Murray with us here in the commentary box at uh, at Stamford Bridge. Stuart, first of all, Dyke Steele coming on. Yeah. Just damage limitation for, for Michael Carrick. Yeah, just a bit of a text now, I think, on that side with uh, Van der Berg. Raheem Stelln, obviously, a, an obvious threat. I think it's just keep the scoreline down, as simple as that. But I don't want to put a down on it, but I think the best player at the Riverside has just come on, hasn't he, at halftime? <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be difficult. They're going to be under pressure, so they're going to have to defend. I didn't know whether I had the heart to uh, to remind you of that, yeah. but uh, we were sat alongside each other, of course, uh, a fortnight ago, and certainly when Madawaka left the field, uh, you know, we've, I think we both felt that Chelsea's real threat had disappeared that particular night. 
so it, it could be, although Middlesbrough now, that's their task, I guess, Glenn, is to try and avoid, you know, conceding even more goals and, and facing the embarrassment of a real shellacking. Yeah, it is, and obviously it's, it's a, a positive change, a like for like for Chelsea, fresh legs going forward. And I'm just looking at the Chelsea bench, uh, very young, but players like Alfie Gilchrist, Castledane, Chuck Tremecker, David Washington. I, I just wonder if, if Pochettino might think this is an opportunity to get the young lads out, get them some, some minutes and uh, blood them. Sterling loses the ball. Wimbledon have got a goal back, incidentally, in League 2. MK gone 3, Wimbledon 1. Here is uh, Chilwell. Cross comes in from the left. Header out from Clark. Middlesbrough eventually with uh, with House and should get this ball clear inside his own penalty area. He just pushes it short. And this will allow Vandenberg to play it up towards that right-hand side. Little flick now in field towards Crooks. Crooks, though, gives it away. Hackney will try and win it back. And then Housen goes into the challenge. Matter Waker brushes his head. And Engel will see it back to his central defender, Clark. But they're coming under pressure straight away. And Clark's ball out of defence will go straight towards De Sassi on this near side. Hearts have reduced the arrears at Tynecastle. Hearts 1, Dundee 2 is the latest score in the Scottish Premiership. This is the, uh, the League Cup. It's the first of the second leg of the two semi-finals where Chelsea are convincingly going through. Fulham 1, Liverpool 2. Might well be a tighter affair at Craven Cottage tomorrow. John Murray and Chris Sutton will be the commentary team for that one. And our FA Cup fourth round coverage actually starts on Thursday night on Sports Extra with that tie involving Bournemouth against Swansea. Of course, Chelsea are also involved in that. And on Friday night, Aston Villa come here. We'll have that game on Sports Extra as well because Tottenham-Manchester City is our main game from 8 o'clock. But uh, their first objective will be achieved with ease as they're breezing their way into the final of the League Cup. There's a little bit of fancy footwork by Glover. Barlassa almost caught in possession by Palmer. He has, in fact, been dispossessed. Matawaka stopped by Clark. Ball will run out and behind for a, a corner kick. Matawaka has stayed down. Chelsea don't look finished today. They look like they're hungry for goals. Quite often, it can be the manager at half-time saying, just take it easy, boys, let's just get through this game, no injuries. But no, Chelsea look hungry for more. And they look like they've got an injury. It's, it's the young man that's came on, Madueke, he's gone down, he's clutching his shoulder, which could be a real problem. It looks possibly like he's just slipped it out rather than around in pain on the turf. A couple of physios just hovering over him. And hopefully, from a Chelsea point of view, their injury list is long enough without another addition. Well, it is, and especially, and it is surprising given the fact that they, they actually haven't played a lot of games this season. It's not like they're in Europe. You know, you compare them to a number of some of the other elite clubs in the Premier League, they don't have European competition, and yet they have something like 10 players out. Is that the training regime? I, I, I know they train very hard, the players not used to it. That can be effective, can it? Or maybe just a bit of bad luck. I think that one's just a collision. Well, Matt Waker is uh, back to his uh, his feet. Uh, Chilwell will walk across the Chelsea captain to acknowledge the supporters in the Matthew Harding stand away towards our right-hand side. Matt Waker just still getting, still feeling that that right shoulder, but it looks like he's going to be okay to uh, to continue. He's just trying to wheel his arm a little bit to try and get some movement in the. Uh, the ball of his shoulder as the corner kick waits to be taken. A lot of jostling taking place inside that six-yard area. They're trying to protect Glover, the, uh, the goalkeeper, all in green. There are quite a few empty blue seats that have appeared in the uh, the Middlesbrough end. Hardly surprising given the uh, the scoreline. Some of them, I think, have thought, right, we're going to try and get back. It's a long trek back to uh, to Teesside, but those that have remained are still finding their voices despite the scoreline. Chilwell with the in-swinging corner, headed out only as far as Palmer on that far side, keeps the ball in play, plays it back. This is Caicedo. Caicedo, 30 yards out from the Middlesbrough goal, gets it back from Enzo Fernandez. Palmer has stayed out wide, rushes the ball past Hayden Hackney, tries to stay tight towards him, an excellent play again by, by Palmer. 
he is a joy to watch, isn't he? Oh, he is, isn't he? I mean, he's just toying with the Middlesbrough players there. Chilwell to Colwell. Didn't get the curl. It's a left-footed diagonal effort that went a good two feet wide of the left-hand post goal kick. Chelsea still lead 4-0. Uh, Colwell there with a good opportunity. He's looking to try and bend it in that far corner. Gets good purchase on the ball, but no bend. It stays straight as an arrow. Just drifts wide. Of Glover's, of Glover's post. Ooh, Glover still trying to play out a defence at uh, Middlesbrough rather than going long and they try to beat the Chelsea press. Up it goes to Morgan Rogers, who is fouled by Thiago Silva. And Thiago Silva is going to get shown a, a yellow card here by referee John Brooks. We haven't really seen too much of what Rogers can do because at times he's been so isolated. No, but he does look like the one in that middle of the side that just has a little bit more class than the others. Just looks like he's got something about him. Even there, he jumps up and he's trying to race onto the ball and not buy the free kick. He looks, uh, he's got good stature and he's, he's definitely the shining light in this Middlesbrough side. Middlesbrough then looking for a consolation. It's a free kick midway through the Chelsea half, 10 yards in from the right touch line. It's a diagonal ball that is uh, delivered, easily headed away by Marawaka. Lifted back by Hackney. Uh, Vandenberg finds uh, Hackney with a run. Left side of the penalty area, turns, crosses, headed out by Colwell. And now maybe Chelsea can break, but there was Dyke Steele to help win it back for Middlesbrough. Clark will eventually curb the threat of, uh, of Broya, and Engel passes the ball inside. Of course, for Middlesbrough, yeah, the supporters would have dreamed about maybe a, a Wembley trip 20 years on from the competition when they won it in Cardiff back in 2004 against Bolton Wanderers. But the uh, the bigger picture for Middlesbrough is getting into the playoffs. They're only three points off the playoff scene in the uh, in the championship. They're currently lying at 11th. And after a slow start to the season, they will hope that this doesn't necessarily knock their confidence for their primary objective for Michael Carrick and to go one step better than where they uh, they failed last season against Coventry. No, definitely. I think I think you've got to lick your wounds and then get back to business, which is your league form. They're still right in a shout of getting in the playoffs, and that that would be the ultimate. That is what they started off the season wanting to do to try and get back into the to the Premier League to try and make these fixtures a regular occurrence back on the Riverside. Engel challenged by uh, by Marawaka. The referee says that will be actually a a Chelsea throw. And for, uh, for Middlesbrough and Michael Carrick down below, still barking out the orders in that technical area. Ten minutes into the, uh, the second half, Enzo Fernandez, Colwell out towards Chilwell. And it was Brooks who curbed the run of Chilwell. He was booked earlier in the, in the half, but John Brooks is just going to let that one, uh, that, that one ride. Quite rightly so as well, but ten minutes into the uh, to the second half, Reading incidentally, have, uh, I think have just taken the lead at home to Derby. We'll try and bring you news of that goal when we can from Sahel Sahi in what was a, an eight o'clock kickoff in uh, in League One. Here is uh, Thiago Silva, Cole Palmer. Cole will find Sterling just dropping short of the halfway line. And the problem is now when Middlesbrough do get their foot on the ball, there's not as many options, people aren't showing as much. They, there's not that bravery anymore and all of a sudden the legs are a little bit heavier, a bit more tired and the Chelsea players are fresh. They're round them, they're quick, they're sharp. And it's punishing them even more. Yeah, there is, uh, there's looked to be a hunger about this uh, this Chelsea side as Palmer spreads the ball out towards Madawaka. Now he feeds it short towards Broya, makes the run right side of the area, pulled back by De Sassi, Palmer's instant layoff, headed away by Housen, comes to Palmer, lovely little first touch, tried on the turn on the inside, breaks then to Enzo Fernandez, who skies it out for a goal kick, it will go, Chelsea still lead 4-0, and Sahel Sahi will tell us news of that Reading goal. Yeah, and it was Paul Makaru who scored, Ian, it was a good effort from the right-hand side, initially from the Reading captain, Andy Yardum, good save, from Josh Fick as a Derby goalkeeper, but he pushed it out into a central zone where Paul Makaru slammed it home right-footed from 12 yards away. So relegation threatened, Reading 1, Derby 0. Maybe Middlesbrough-Stewart have got to try and turn this negative into a positive for the remaining, what, 10 games of the season? 
Yeah, I think Michael's obviously message would be, you know, think of the first 15 minutes when he had that composure. You know, made a obviously a very big team, good team, but uh, cost a lot of money. Looked pretty average, but then obviously it became a bit of a, a bit of a moan, didn't it? But I think, um, yeah, that's the level they're trying to get at, isn't it, in the Premier League? Up, uh, but I think, he, especially for the young players, it's a good lesson for them. Well, that's slightly longer, isn't it? They've got about 18 games left of the season. He's trying to finish the se season a little bit earlier there for uh, for Middlesbrough. Well, hope that the night was could uh, could be curtailed. That is for sure. 12 minutes into the second half as they trail by four goals to nil. Although their record at Stamford Bridge really is uh, is dreadful. They're without a win at Stamford Bridge in 21 visits since a 2-1 victory in the old First Division when Alan Willey and John Craggs got the goals for Jack Charlton, a team that included Graham Souness. Well, that's a long time ago, Dan. I think you were commentating, weren't you? Well, <laughs> if Stuart says he was playing in that one, then I would be worried. <laughs> Mind you, I tell you what, I did feel my age because I sent uh, Jonathan Woodgate a birthday message yesterday, 44 for uh, for Woody. Yeah. But I commentated on his debut in 1998 when he was 18. I bet he I feels did... 54 now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel 64 working with Glenn. <laughs> 58 minutes played, and Chelsea are leading by four goals to nil. Sterling on that far side ball clattered away by Vandenberg it breaks towards Caicedo they've got uh, a freedom it would seem of, uh, of Chelsea now as uh, De Sassi out towards Madawaka. Madawaka cuts in off this right touch line to the edge of the area Palmer looking for a little touch it bounces off the body of Brooks and is gathered in by Glover one player for me Chelsea tonight is Enzo I think he's been absolutely exceptional I think he's, he's benefited from probably Gallagher not being in the team and just being allowed to get forward a little bit more often obviously there's not that threat in behind as much as you would get a, a Premier League opposition but I think he's, he's looked the real deal tonight ends up do you think as well that um, for, I'm thinking of Rodgers and Hackney who's been talked about of a, a potential player moving to the uh, to the Premier League these it, for those individuals or for other individuals it's a chance still to try and stay you know take a claim yeah because there's, there's always eyes reputation. watching isn't there yeah. there's always eyes watching in and be thinking you know, they don't, don't just watch you when you're winning games it's when you're losing games what's your temperament like does he throw his hands in the air now the 4 nil down yeah 100% I mean if uh, if one of them two lads gets a goal they can walk in and say I've done my job <laughs> <laughs> that's a tri that's a striker's comment isn't it yeah. <laughs> isn't it ball cleared by Petrovic who's uh, he just had that one shot to save in the first half from uh, from Rogers, but to their credit the Middlesbrough fans are still making noise away towards our left hand side as we have half an hour remaining here is Palmer De Sassi short of the halfway line and now with uh, with Colwell but any jeopardy in the game disappeared really when De Sassi got that third goal after 36 minutes. And they were 2-1 down overall in the tie. They still had hope, but it was soon extinguished and it has certainly disappeared since. Rogers though, for Middlesbrough. Now to Hackney. Engel carries it forward, looks for the return ball to uh, Hackney. And the Middlesbrough supporters are now being outsung by the, uh, the Chelsea fans who are getting to their feet around us, safe in the knowledge that they can start booking their tickets for the 25th of February for either Liverpool or Fulham. Could have a West London derby of a League Cup final or a repeat of Chelsea-Liverpool from just a, a few years ago. What was that? Was that 2019? It was actually a really good final. With uh, it went to penalties from uh, from memory. Out it goes for a throw on the far side. Middlesbrough with a throw on the right hand side. Howson. Of course, for the Todd Burley project as well. It would be a, a first final since he spent 4.25 billion in purchasing the club and another billion pounds on players and acquisitions since. 
as Rogers tries to slide a ball through to uh, to Dyke Steele in the inside right channel of the area. 62 minutes played. Dale Fry with a, a clearance went down clutching his hamstring. He's back to his feet but hobbling a little bit. And that's the other thing that Michael Carrick certainly won't want many more injuries. No, definitely not. There's still a lot of games left to play in the championship. It's a relentless league, tough opposition week in, week out. Especially when the prize of getting back to the Premier League is so big. But the players will have had a little insight this evening just to how big that step up is. And I do feel that that, that is getting bigger and bigger year by year. What with the finances in the Premier League, VAR as well. It's getting tougher and tougher for the Championship clubs to stay there. Engel with a pacey cross delivered from the left-hand side. Dyke Steele wins it back. Maybe an opportunity for Rogers. Left-footed shot blocked by Thiago Silva. It was 2022, the, uh, the Chelsea-Liverpool final. Losing track of time altogether here tonight. 62 and a half minutes played. Chelsea still lead by four goals to nil. Haven't had too much to cheer, but that was uh, one of those few opportunities for the travelling support from Teesside behind that goal, but it was easily blocked by Thiago Silva. Yeah, it was. It probably fell to the man they would like it to fall to. Morgan Rodgers just let it run onto his left foot, tries to hit it back across, but it's Thiago Silva. The wise man of the Chelsea defence gets his angles right, closes his legs, thwarts it, and it would be nice for that travelling support of Middlesbrough just to get a goal. Yes. Yeah, well, it has been a, an excellent run to the uh, to the semi-finals. They've won all six of their. It's been a tough run, then, all the way. Yeah, you know, they've won every single match. Bristol City and Queens Park Rangers, are the two teams outside of the top flight, have only had longer winning runs in the competition. As Vandenberg just shown a, a, a yellow card by referee John Brooks. Let's get an update from Bolton. Uh, an update from Bolton, Mike Miner. Uh, Bolton still leading by a goal to nil that first half. Victor Adeboyejo, goal both sides in this second half. A fine up to the final third and then the end product completely lacks. Subs on to keep it fresh for Bolton. Try and chase the game for Cheltenham, but it's Bolton 1, Cheltenham 0. And news of a chance at Reading to Hellside. Yeah, still Reading 1, Derby 0, 64 minutes played, but uh, Derby have come close through a triple substitution made by their manager, Paul Warren. It was Tyrese John Jules, good cross from the left-hand side. He hanged high, eight yards away, header just inches wide. Still Reading 1, Derby 0. Couple of changes here for uh, for Chelsea. Ben Chilwell making his first start after missing 18 games. Well, he's been out since the end of September. I know he came off the bench against Fulham, but uh, Stewart to get a, a run out of what 65 minutes yeah. under his belt, yeah. significant. He's played well as well, hasn't he? I think, especially the first half, he was the sort of outlet ball, made some great runs, and I think that's a sensible decision. In it, don't take a risk with him. He's played like I say, 60 odd minutes. He's had a good run out and getting ready for the next one. And so uh, Alfie Gilchrist comes on to replace him. He's a 20-year-old defender who uh, was signed from Queen's Park Rangers youth system at the age of 10. It's just his sixth appearance for Chelsea for uh, Alfie Gilchrist. And Gallagher, Conor Gallagher, came on for, uh, for Broya. So that's the double change that uh, Chelsea have, uh, have made. Conor Gallagher, whose uh, future still remains. A lot of talk that he, they're willing to sell him. Yeah, and that, that goes back to, I suppose, the, the FFP, uh, homegrown player, so that would go right back into the bank roll for Chelsea. And I suppose when you look at it, what do you want? Would you like to go back in the transfer market, get a recognised centre-forward? Or you've got, I suppose they've got, they've got to be clever with, with how they, they roll, but just those changes, seeing a couple of, a couple of alterations, Cove Armour just goes into that nine roll, and then the whole defence is shuffled over one, leave our cobble to left-back. To Sassi and Silva, centre backs, and Gilchrist right back. Crooks to Dyke Steele. Hackney couldn't get the touch either. Enzo Fernandez. He, I mean, there's a number of Chelsea players who've stood out tonight, but uh, Enzo Fernandez and, and Cole Palmer would certainly be at the top of uh, such a list. I mean, I think it's fair to say Cole Palmer stood out all season. There, there, yeah. was a, there, there was a point where he was the only shining light in the team, but now everyone seems to be getting up to pace. They're looking more of a collective or a team, more of an understanding, the relationships have been built, that takes time. And it certainly seems like they're building 
Well, I'm sure they'll get uh, much of a, a sterner test against Aston Villa on Friday night in the FA Cup, but they'll go into it unbeaten in nine here at the, uh, at the bridge. One loss in 12 home games since late September. They might complain at times about the, uh, the atmosphere, but they certainly can't complain about the, uh, the results. As Gilchrist with his short cropped hair, Marawaka midway through the second half here at, uh, at Stamford Bridge. I think Gilchrist is the one that they expect to step into this first team. I think he's had the seal of approval from club legend John Terry that he could be the next one to break through. Hearts, who were 2-0 down at home to Dundee in the Scottish Premiership, have actually got it back to 2-2 at Tyne Castle now. Hearts 2, Dundee 2, and Wimbledon are down to 10 men as they trail 3-1 away at MK Dons in League 2. Tomorrow night, Craven Cottage. Fulham against Liverpool. Can Fulham do what Chelsea have done and overturn a first leg deficit away from home? And then the FA Cup fourth round from uh, Thursday. There's a cross delivered low from the right-hand side. Caicedo easily will find Enzo Fernandez. Tottenham Manchester City we mentioned on Friday. Our Saturday games are Ipswich Town against Maidstone United. As the ball is played through towards Gallagher. Gallagher running in goal. Gallagher still going in towards the penalty area. Can't get the shot away. Following up is Palmer. And then sliding was, uh, was Clark behind for a corner kick. Just didn't seem to have the pace. No, great third man run. I thought he was going to cut in on, and take on his left foot, but he just got eased out right further and further. Just lost control of the ball a little bit, Conor Gallagher. And it's Palmer who's following up and again desperate to try and switch it onto that left foot. Middlesbrough managed to get it out for a corner. So, corner kick, which Palmer waits to take. Chelsea with all goals coming in the first half. Final quarter of the game remains. We're on air till 10.30. Gordon Smart will then take over on BBC Radio 5 Live. Any reaction that we're unable to bring you before 10.30 will be on the 5 Live Football Daily Pod. Every outfield player is in the Middlesbrough half. It's out to Sterling now on that far side, the left, as the rain sweeps across and this swirling wind at Stamford Bridge once more. Caicedo, Palmer, lovely little forward ball. De Sassi had a swish of the right boot. Couldn't get the telling connection, but again, Palmer's vision. Yeah, I mean, not only has he, has he got a brilliant sort of ball manipulation and, and the way he can suck people in and drift past them, his vision... Of, of seeing a, a whole host of people in front of him and being able to pick out the one runner. He is exceptional in that 10 roll. I really, really like him there. And like I say, for Chelsea, he has been the one this season for me that has really led the way. For such a young man to be leading the way in this group, I think it speaks volumes of his character. Taking that move from Manchester City, taking that leap of faith, coming out of the umbrella of Pep Guardiola and the comfort of winning trophy after trophy and being stood out on his own making a man of himself and, and being counted as a Chelsea player I think he's been absolutely outstanding Middlesbrough are going to make a change Johnny Housen's going to be coming off he's going to be replaced by Lewis O'Brien and while that change happens and uh, uh, Housen's getting a standing ovation from the Middlesbrough travelling support did I just see like almost like a nod of appreciation when you were watching Cole Palmer there Stuart yeah brilliant not only that I think if you look at his you know, off the ball work as well some of the pressing he does as well for the first, for the couple of the goals even that side of his game is, is really really good you, know, everyone, you can see the talent he's obviously got that but he's obviously got the other side of the game as well which Mauricio liked in that pressing game and I think for his own goal he scored he, he, he took it off someone in the middle of the box so do you think that's, he's top player do you think that's just an understanding of the game taught to him by Pep maybe maybe I'm, I'm actually surprised they let him go I, you know, I think he, he would have been obviously Mahrez leaving. I thought his chance would have opened up for him to come, but he's obviously thinking I'm not going to play. And, and like you said, big decision for him to come to Chelsea, big club, big expectation. But he's just full of confidence, and he? he's just got that play. He's got a bit of arrogance about him, but in a good way, class player. You'd certainly have to say that decision was uh, was vindicated as well with uh, 10 goals in 23 appearances, and uh, certainly a. An extremely strong contender for Gareth Southgate squad of uh, of 23 um, for the for the Euros in the summer. Now there's going to be a further change. Triple Mecca is the player who's going to be coming on, and he was a, a late substitute against Fulham 
for his first appearance since August with a, with a knee injury. He replaces Caicedo. He's a another player who's um, has got a bag of talent, but just has been thwarted by uh, by injury this season. Let's get an update from Reading. Sahel Sahi. Yeah, 19 minutes to play here, Ian. It's still Reading 1, Derby 0, but it's a good game this now. Derby are pushing on. They need to get back into this game. If they win, they've still got to score two goals, by the way, but if they win, they go top of League One tonight on goal difference. But a lot of work to do for Derby. They're trailing here at Reading by a goal to nil. Here is uh, Engel. Caught in possession by Chukwemeka. Madueka on this near side. Chukwemeka is going to go ahead of him, but Madueka will hold on to the ball. Um, you know, yesterday was the, the 97th anniversary of the first live radio commentary, which was Arsenal against Sheffield United back in the day. As Graham, Graham Sterling almost catching Dale Fry out as they try and play from the back. And as a result of that tenacity and that pressing, they get a, a corner kick. Well, the 97, uh, 97 years on, we've got eight commentaries for you on Five Live and Sports Extra for FA Cup fourth round weekend to look forward to. But this is the League Cup, and uh, well, I'm not going to necessarily say they're going to get as many goals as commentaries uh, for this weekend, but uh, Chelsea's hunger certainly hasn't been diluted. No, not at all. But I mean. In all fairness, Middlesbrough, they're enticing that press and when their passing isn't quite up to standard and their confidence has been knocked this evening, you wonder why they're doing it and Chelsea just keep pressing and keep getting the ball back and creating opportunities. Wimbledon are now down to nine men as they trail 3-1 at, uh, at MK Dons. Always difficult, isn't it, a, a second half when the game's effectively over? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I think that, that Michael Carrick will it'll be happy, especially with the scoreline. You don't want it to become a rout, uh, which it could have been. Uh, Chelsea did start the second half looking like they wanted more, but they, they've, they've slowed down, made a lot of changes, lost that, that sort of, I suppose, that fluidity that, that they had, especially in the first half. I think the, diff, the disappointing thing for me with, with Middlesbrough, out of possession, they've made it a training game and they've just given Thiago Silva and Levi Colwell the ball and said do what you wish without any pressure and I think that is something that they may look back on and, and regret slightly Crooks, Barlasa Vandenberg certainly the uh, the injuries that Middlesbrough have had to contend with have uh, limited the options for uh, for Michael Carrick, particularly the one that we touched upon in the, uh, the first half from Isaiah Jones as Morgan Rogers gives chase and Petrovic easily clears the ball away uh, downfield and Clark will just let that uh, that ball settle but what positives do you think that Michael Carrick will be able to take out of this if any Stuart Downing well, I think like I said the first half the first 15 minutes were really good um, the game plan sort of worked until Chelsea scored I think second half you've got to give him credit they've kept going haven't they? they've still tried I think they've bit of night he's still playing out from the back a little bit they've been caught again I think this will go a little bit longer just to relieve that pressure from the back lads but yeah I think the biggest thing is they've kept going um, you know for such a young team they haven't gone under so that I think that's a big plus for them Stuart Downing and Glenn Murray are with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds we've got 15 minutes remaining uh, Chip Lameca finds Gallagher Gallagher on the stretch lays it out towards Madueka Chukwemeka has continued his run into the box. Madaweka enters it now, right side, finds Chukwemeka. They combine back to Madaweka, tried to pull it back. There were two royal blue shirts running in towards the six-yard box at that near post. Behind it goes for a corner kick. Good intricate football by Chelsea, just trying to break Middlesbrough down. Last-ditch challenge from Matt Clark. Maurizio Pochettino will also be hoping that it's a case of third time lucky he lost both finals with uh, with Tottenham in the uh, in the League Cup and of course the Champions League final in 2019 as the corner is delivered very very deep and Raheem Sterling won't retrieve that and it runs out of play for uh, for a throw although Chelsea actually were the last team to break the stranglehold of clubs from the northwest in this competition when they won it back in 2015 since then Manchester City have won it five times Manchester United twice Liverpool once might be that year again, don't so, uh, I think you know what you just you just asked Stewie about about Middlesbrough. I think I think you've got to 
it's important to, to be proud of what they've done. Obviously, it's come to a really sad end, but you've got to take into consideration that the, the people they're up against, the money that's been spent by Chelsea, and they've got to be they've got to be really proud. I mean, they've gone through five rounds of, of, of football and every single one of them away from home. They actually beat Chelsea home, so even though tonight they'll be disappointed, they'll be hurt, they should take a lot of pride out of this out of this cup run. And I'm sure that they will as Gallagher on that far side of the left with a cutback. First time finish from Cole Palmer. Well, Cole Palmer has been absolutely outstanding. And he's got his second of the night. Such an influential figure as Chelsea are breezing their way to the Carabao Cup final. They lead Middlesbrough by five goals to nil. And this time, Cole Palmer doesn't even celebrate. It's a tap in, a right footed one usually very left foot dominated the young man but this time it's fed across by Conor Gallagher and he just opens that right foot out plays it to the left hand side of the middle of the goalkeeper low hard uses the pace that's already on the ball nestles in the back of the net to make it Chelsea 5 Middlesbrough nil. The Royal Blue smoke bomb has been let off on the uh, onto the playing surface on that far side of the ground, so there will be a, a delay to the proceedings. The thing is, Stuart Downing, he just makes it look so easy. Yeah, that's not an easy finish. Uh, did you see it was quite easy, that Glenn? No, 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 no I didn't know. It's, it's a difficult finish, especially on your weaker foot. You know yeah. what I mean? Not I that he's not that he's got a weak foot. I don't think. Yeah. If that was on my right foot, he wouldn't have been in that bottom corner. Let me tell you, it was a great finish. 5-0 and 5-1 on aggregate. There is uh, certainly no urgency from the stewards to deal with that um, that smoke bomb that is billowing in the uh, the far corner. So we'll go off to Reading and Sahel Sahi. Yeah, we've got 12 minutes to play here, Ian. It's Reading 1, Derby 0. Reading in the bottom four of League 1, up against Derby, who are third. If they win tonight... Derby will go top of League One on goal difference. It's end-to-end -end football, though, and Reading are very, very dangerous on the counter-attack, and they're leading Derby by a goal to nil. Incredible fight back by Hearts at Tynecastle. They were 2-0 down to Dundee in the Scottish Premiership, but it's Hearts 3, Dundee 2 now as a, as a latest score, as finally it has been extinguished and play can resume with 10 minutes remaining. Uh, so still the Middlesbrough fans to their credit are singing away the red and white scars being swirled around their heads for those that have that remained as Sterling thought that he'd been fouled and now the ball is hit long by Barlassa for the run of uh, Rodgers cut out though by Thiago Silva on that far side and it will be a Chelsea throw yeah they're not going to let a bad performance and a lot of goals fall their evening they're still having fun to the left hand side of us swinging their scarves above their head they're still probably the louder of the two sets of fans Good on the Middlesbrough fans. They're, they've, they've had a good journey and had to come to an end at some point. And unfortunately, it's been in this fashion. They were looking to become the first lower league side to eliminate Premier League opposition since Bradford City beat Aston Villa in 2013. And Phil Parkinson's side, who were League Two, you might recall, reached the final only to, uh, to lose to the same scoreline that Middlesbrough are losing now to Swansea City at Wembley. But Chelsea, in emphatic style, have booked their place in the final where they'll take on the winners of either Fulham or Liverpool. And you'll hear that tomorrow on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Middlesbrough giving the ball away again. Ball fed through towards Madawaka. Madawaka in the penalty area, takes the reflection off the legs of Vandenberg, but it was going goalbound anyway. Middlesbrough have been hit for six, and Chelsea are bound for the first final in the bowling era. 6-0. And again, it's Middlesbrough, masters of their own downfall, trying to play out from the back, and Chelsea pounce like they have done on so many occasions this evening. And it's Madueke who gets the ball, cut in his left, arm, left foot, looks at that far corner, and yes, it is goal-bound, but that final touch is from Van der Berg, hits it high into his own goal to make it Chelsea 6, Middlesbrough 0. If you've just walked into Stamford Bridge now and your eyes are just focused on the, the shed end, and you see the Middlesbrough fans swirling their red and white scarves above their, their head and the singing, you'd have thought, a Middlesbrough just scored. Yeah. To be fair, I don't know, I think their win was last week, uh, the couple of weeks ago, one at yeah. the Riverside, wasn't it? But it's the, uh, the Chelsea supporters who are singing K Sera, K Sera, because they lead 6 0 with nine minutes remaining. I love that the Middlesbrough fans haven't let the scoreline spoil their evening. They're swinging their scarves, they're bouncing up and down, and they're still enjoying it. 
here is Rogers. If only they could see a, a consolation in the time that is left here on uh, on Five Live. But uh, Engel stepping forward on this near side, the left. It's a strong run by uh, by Engel, being tracked by Chukwemeka all the way. But it's uh, nothing is going to deter those Middlesbrough fans, even the scoreline, it would seem. Here is Engel, O'Brien, left hand side. Now with uh, with Hackney, floated ball forward, the little flick header, and they do get their consolation from Brooks's glancing header. Eight minutes remaining, they do have something to cheer after all, but then the flag is raised, and it's the Chelsea cheers that cut short. And in fact, there's some of the Middlesbrough fans who still haven't realised that it was the flag, and it doesn't count. No, they're still bouncing up and down like the goal's been given, but I think they're just, they're just enjoying themselves now. And that just sums up their evening, does it? It's actually a fantastic header from Matt Crooks. He just glances it into the far corner, nestles in the bottom bottom left-hand corner of Petrovic's goal. Fortunately, it wasn't to be for Middlesbrough. Such a shame, because you'd have to be a real killjoy to have denied them that, uh, that consolation, but it didn't count. And it remains 6-0 to Chelsea. Full-time now at Bolton. Mike Mane. Bolton won Cheltenham nil enough as it stands to send Bolton third above Derby because they're losing at Reading, as you've been hearing. Adeboyejo with the decisive goal midway through the first half. Very nearly an equaliser deep into stoppage time. Cheltenham denied by two late blocks in the box. Wasn't a classic. Both sides lack quality in the final third. And Exeter are winning too. That's not good news for Cheltenham. Puts further space between them and safety. Full-time, Bolton won, Cheltenham nil. This is Madawaka, Chuck Lemecker on the stretch, couldn't get there. The attempted clearance by Dale Fryers hit his own player, Lewis O'Brien. It's gone behind for a corner kick. And after the uh, the two goals in the space of three minutes have seen Chelsea lead 6-0. Middlesbrough will be hoping not to concede any more. They wouldn't want a, a total capitulation inside the, um, the last six minutes of this contest as the corner's taken short on the right-hand side. When one step beyond is played at the end of the game, which I'm sure it will, it wouldn't surprise me that the Middlesbrough fans will dance to it with as much gusto as the Chelsea supporters. Do you know what, Deno, when you've been done by six, why not? Huh? Here is uh, Enzo Fernandez. Out of wake up, challenge from Engel, out of play it goes for, uh, for a throw. Six minutes remain. Uh, further changes are going to be made and we're going to see Leo Castledine who's going to be coming on he's the son of the former Wimbledon uh, striker Stuart Castledine and he's coming on for his Chelsea debut he's been an unused substitute on four occasions this season but the 18 year old midfielder getting an opportunity uh, for the last five minutes and he replaces Raheem Sterling well, it'll be a game that Chelsea fans won't forget in a long time for the scoreline, but the Castledown family, they'll remember it for different reasons. What a great moment for that young man there getting on, make his debut at Stamford Bridge. So Castledown comes on. Stewart, a former player, his mum was Lucy Alexander, the uh, used to be on the TV. Well, that's impressed Lady Kelly. It's yeah, the first yeah. impressive thing I've said all night, the way that, me, that she perked up there. Yeah, she popped out from the end there, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Under five minutes remaining. She's probably just checking it now, Googling it, just to make sure that I'm right. Here is Gilchrist over the halfway line. Perfect opportunity, though, isn't it, to bring on some of the younger players in this, this scenario? Yeah, fantastic experience for him. It's a great score. Just come on and get a few touches of the ball, get his confidence. Perfect for him. Free kick, no, it's a throw rather for uh, for Chelsea. I'll give you the full-time scores in the uh, in the lower leagues in a moment. A handful of games in the, in League Two tonight, uh, but they're still actually playing at both Mansfield and MK Dons. And then I'll run through the latest scores in the, in League One. Five Live Football Daily is uh, will be providing all the reaction and the look ahead to tomorrow's semi-final as well. And BBC Sounds, it doesn't, doesn't just cater for the uh, for your sport as well. It's for uh, for everyone and everything. And Traitors Unlocked will be available from 10 o'clock tomorrow for the uh, for the finale on BBC Sounds for this uh, we this week for that hit series on BBC One. 
Oh, I can't read my traitors and cloaks. I even read my own writing in the uh, in the dark conditions here at uh, at Stamford Bridge. As Enzo Fernandez with a back pass. You just asked me, is this the biggest scoreline in the League Cup semi-final, Glenn? The answer is no. The record win over semi-finals for two legs was Manchester City beating Burton 10-0 in 2019. What, over, what about over one leg? Just, just in, in one of the ties. Didn't Man City beat West Ham 6-0 and I played in that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to... I think it was eight or nine in the world aggregate, I'm not lying. Here is uh, here is Rogers. Check it. Running forward, Rogers with a shot, fine goal. Rogers may well be finishing this League Cup as the leading scorer in the competition. He has got the consolation with his fifth goal in the League Cup this season. It was a low right-footed effort, and those Middlesbrough fans do have something to celebrate. A consolation, Chelsea six, Middlesbrough one. I must admit, as that ball flies into the back of that, there's a big smile on my face, Denno, because they've not given up. The fans deserve that, coming down from Middlesbrough. And do you know what? I think it's probably the goal of the evening. Morgan Rodgers on the left-hand side, he's cutting on his right foot and he's found that far corner, low and hard, give the goalkeeper no chance, nestled into the side netting. Brilliant finish. Might be the only one of, one of the evening for Middlesbrough, but it's the best goal of the night so far. Well, Stuart, he's just proved what he's all about. What a finish, like, like Glenn said, goal of the night, it would have been worthy of being the winner, but yeah, he's got he's obviously got a lot of talent, hasn't he? I think he's been the sort of brightness of Middlesbrough, he's kept going, and I think he deserved that goal, but um, it's a shame it just is only a consolation. It is uh, a consolation, as it is uh, 6-1. Manchester City, incidentally, won one of those legs 9-0. So it was uh, never a record. So Stuart, you're safe. <laughs> but 6-1 uh, is the uh, the latest score and we're about to find out how much injury time Rogers now edges ahead of uh, of Cody Gakpo with his fifth goal in the uh, in the competition BBC Radio 5 live Chelsea can they add to their scoring or will the game just peter out in these uh, closing stages Bolton beat Cheltenham by a goal to nil. Bristol nil, Exeter one is still a latest score. Charlton two, Northampton three is how it finished at the Valley. And latest scores in League One, Oxford nil, Barnsley one. In fact, that's just finished at the Kassam Stadium. Wigan nil, Wickham nil is the latest score. Reading still lead Derby County by a goal to nil. So Derby missing out on the chance to go to the top of League One. Victory would have taken them to the summit. Uh, MK Dons 3, Wimbledon 1 is the latest score in League 2. They are still playing, Wimbledon down to nine men. Mansfield 1, Sutton 1 is how it's finished, and it finished at Valley Parade. Bradford City 1, Salford City 1. They're the latest scores in the uh, in the Football League. And uh, Hearts have indeed beaten Dundee by three goals to two in the Scottish Premiership. We're going to find out how much added on time there will be here. Maurizio Pochettino... He won the French Cup with Paris Saint-Germain in 2021. He will take his Chelsea side to Wembley and we're going to have three additional minutes as Rodgers, Hackney, O'Brien, it bounces away from the edge of the area. But uh, can't complain about the quality from this Chelsea team tonight, Glenn Murray. No, not at all. They've been good, they've been professional, they've been clinical. Right from the off, they knew what was at stake. That was a day out at Wembley for their fans. And I think the football club probably needs this after what they've been through for the last 18 months. It's not what they'd want. The expectation's higher at this football club, but it's a start in this new era of Chelsea Football Club. Well, certainly um, from a Middlesbrough perspective, they were due to play Birmingham this weekend, but because Birmingham's particip participation in the FA Cup has been cancelled so you've got the uh, the derby against Sunderland there's a bit of a break now until early February for, for Middlesbrough to lick their wounds I guess yeah just a chance to regroup again isn't it get maybe some few injuries back that, that may be a big help to them uh, that's probably a disappointing thing for Michael that he couldn't probably feel a stronger team against Chelsea might have been the same outcome but it would have given him a better chance I think 
Stuart Downing and Glenn Murray here on BBC Radio 5 Live. We're on air until 10.30, so another 40 minutes as the uh, the Middlesbrough fans are still making the noise inside Stamford Bridge. That's my favourite chant of the night. We've only come to see the borough. <laughs> they trail 6-1, so they are going out 6-2 on aggregate in this semi-final. As De Sassi will pick up the loose ball midway through his own half, and now to Enzo Fernandez, Maduweka, Gallagher ahead of him, checked by Clark, no fouls as referee John Brooks, Engel will uh, pick it up, looks for uh, for Rogers making the run in behind Gilchrist again, he gets there, Rogers still going, still going, holds off and shrugs off the challenge of Gilchrist, keeps the ball, runs it back from the byline, and then Enzo Fernandez is there to help out his Chelsea teammate, and now it's with Castledine who will scuttle away on that far side to keep the ball in play ball rolled inside to uh, to Gallagher but even if you look around Stamford Bridge I guess there's a, a there's a degree of um, the Chelsea supporters have been spoilt in uh, in recent years when you think that under uh, the Roman Abramovich area nine trophies in 19 years but there's still a lot of empty blue seats where the Chelsea fans have been you know it's not like they're going to say all right we celebrate we're through to the final they've gone home no, before the final whistle you're right Deno there's a lot of lot of blue seats empty seats now in the Chelsea end but there isn't an old left hand side in the middle to end they're still singing loud and proud well there is the full time whistle and Chelsea are convincingly through to the final at Wembley on the 25th of February they've beaten Middlesbrough 6-1 on the night 6-2 on aggregate and as expected for one step beyond Middlesbrough supporters are still dancing to that but it's Chelsea fans who celebrate in the most emphatic of fashions Kelly Glenn Mauricio Pochettino wanted some noise from this Chelsea crowd it took them a little while to get going but they've been given a performance and a result here this evening they can give them something to, to cheer about at last. It feels as though Chelsea may, given their recent Premier League results, given this performance and result here tonight, have turned a corner. Yeah, it does feel like that this evening. Uh, I think you've got to take everything into consideration. They were up against a championship side that, that sort of, I suppose, gave them possession of the football for large periods of this game. But listen, you can't take anything away from them. It's a, it's a major final. Uh, they're going to Wembley. This is why they, they've, they've started this project, spent all this money, brought Maurizio Pochettino back to England. I mean, there's a big picture up on, on the screen of Wembley, in case there are around the screen as well. And this is what Chelsea want, the expectation of getting into major finals, bringing silverware back to the football club. And this could, like you say, Kelly, be a turning point for them. And obviously we'll get into this more between now and, and 10.30, but Mauricio Pochettino staying down on the pitch, chatting to some of the Middlesbrough players, chatting to, to his own players, obviously, and looking as relaxed as we've seen him in a, in a while. How big, Glenn, do you think that, that this could be just for him if they can, if they can go all the way and, and win this trophy? Yeah, I think it would be huge for him, and it would set a precedent as, as his first full year at the football club for, for him to win a trophy. I mean, some will say it's only the Carabao Cup, but it's still a major trophy and it's been good enough for Pep Guardiola and Manchester City for a number of years. So he will see that as the start of, of hopefully a lot more silverware to come back to Chelsea Football Club. And like I say, the expectation of the fans isn't, isn't for that so much. They want to be in Champions League. They want to be fighting at the top of the league. But it's a start. And if they they are now going to Wembley, that, that's been confirmed this evening. And if they can pick up some major silverware and then nip into a European spot in the Premier League, I think that would be a massive success uh, of, of what we sort of seen at the start of the season and the changes of the football club. That'll be a huge progression of this project at Chelsea. Stuart Downing is also with us at Stamford Bridge. Stuart, the, the Middlesbrough players are making their way over somewhat sheepishly towards their supporters, but they're getting a fantastic reception. The Middlesbrough fans haven't stopped singing all night and now they've got their, their scarves up in the air and they, they're just proud of the fact that their, their team have got this far in this competition, even if they've fallen at the final hurdle. I think they're just realistic, Kelly. I think they understand against the quality team. They knew before the game was difficult. I'd speak to fans and they say, you know, 
the likelihood is we're probably going to get beat down at Chelsea, which has happened, but obviously a lot worse than we thought. But listen, they give it a go. They kept going, and I think the big win for Middlesbrough is the home leg when they, when they won one 0 That was a big result for them. Give them a lot of confidence. And listen, they, they can't be too disappointed. I think they give Chelsea, to be fair, a few goals from their own downfall. But overall, they've had a fantastic run, and now they just need to carry on now that into that league form. So no surprise for Middlesbrough this evening as Chelsea progress to the Carabao Cup final in a couple of weeks' time. They will be at Wembley where they'll face either Liverpool or Fulham. That second semi-final second leg will take place tomorrow night. We'll have commentary of that for you on Five Live Sports.